So this is probably just going to end up being a really long, waffly video about nothing, really. Then again, you could say all of my videos are like that. And um, what I've got here is a, a box that's sort of gradually built up over quite a few months, really. And it's sort of just bits and pieces that I've bought over that period of time for different projects, different ideas. So I'm at a point, really, where so I'm trying to get things a bit more organised again and make my life easier so I can just get on with more. So the idea really is just to have a look through here, put things in piles and sort things out and find them homes and, and perhaps have a, a bit of a think about what some of these were for and perhaps talk about some of the ideas that I've come up with with some of this stuff. So we'll start with some of the biggest stuff and see what we've got. So there's obviously going to be quite a bit of retro related stuff in here, in fact probably most of it will be. I think there's some PC things as well. Uh, there's a lot of bits like this that, again, they, sh they shouldn't be in there. Um, that's off uh, an Amiga floppy drive, so that can all go together. I've recently bought um, a Logic Probe, I'm not sure if it's any good. I've had a bit of a go with it, but I don't fully understand what I'm doing at the minute, so... Uh, but that can go with the box of tools, which is also another box, very much like this one, just cram packed with tools and it will need sorting out and organising and into a proper place. Uh, I've recently picked this up, it's obviously a, a new old stock, very battered, it's a, just a Logitech PS2 USB mouse. I've got this because I've got another one of these already and I found that not all of the mice seem to work with the PS2 to Amiga mouse adapters this particular model does. So I figured I'd grab one whilst whilst I saw it. So again that can be unpacked and dealt with and put in with the probably probably put that with my joysticks and mice and whatnot. I've got a box specifically for for that kind of stuff with the retro side of things. Now I've got these pedals here and what these are are for basically for dictation machines and you can perhaps see this one in particular it says play there and back there and this middle bit's just a footrest and then you've got a button either side and I was looking at these uh, before because where I used to work they used to have some of the dictation machines like this sort of I think they were like the Philips ones and I thought they were quite an interesting device because you could use it as a an input device really and Oh, I was thinking obviously partly for games and also for things like any kind of tools where you want to keep your hands free to, to work on something like a, say if you're trying to place surface mount components and you're using a, a suction tool to pick them up and place them then you could have a, a pedal to activate and deactivate the suction or something. Um, some of these like this one are basically they're USB obviously you can see it's got a USB connector so you'd need drivers and things for this to work or it would use specific software. But ultimately inside it's just three or four switches so there's no reason you couldn't chop that off, bypass all the, the circuitry inside and just wire it up literally as a box of switches. And the same for this, this one's only got a switch either side but yeah, I think there's quite a few potential uses for that. Uh, games, perhaps if you're any kind of light gun games and you need a foot pedal for reloading or I think some of the games you sort of duck down out of the way when your foot's not on the pedal. So these are, if you buy them new, they're stupid money, they're really excessively priced. But if you look around on places like eBay, every now and again you'll see them going dirt cheap. I thought it might be a, an interesting controller mechanism. Uh, I think this is, uh, yeah, this is for uh, an Acorn A3000. This is an IDE. Podule, so you plug this on, plug this on to the inside of an Acorn A3000. That'd be along the back plate of the the A3000, and this gives you an IDE controller. I think the idea is you probably mount the, the hard drive along here somewhere. I would assume. Uh, it looks like it's got the small pin header for the uh, laptop size hard drive. Could put a, a bigger pin header on there, I suppose, if if needed or if there was a, a reason to. I've not even tried that yet, and the A3000 still, well, I haven't even tried it, so I'm assuming it's non-functional because of the battery damage that's been caused, or the damage by the battery. 
Yeah, that's, uh, I was quite pleased to pick that up because I was looking into uh, there's some sort of new rivet, new new build versions of these things. Uh, they're quite expensive, and I managed to pick this up for thirty to forty pound, I think, which is not bad going. Cause every other time I've seen them go for a lot, lot more money. Uh, got some discs with it as well with drivers, I think. So that again is, needs to go with all the Acorn stuff. Not sure what this is. Okay, this was another eBay purchase. It's basically some kind of RAM expansion card for a, I think it's for a printer or something. But I basically bought this because it's got a, a stack of RAM chips on and this was being sold really cheap. So these are good, be a good source of replacement RAM, replacement RAM chips for uh, retro hardware. It's a real shame that these pin headers are not a bit wider because they would have been an ideal replacement for the Amiga 500 memory expansion headers. And the nice thick pins there, I've, I've got some replacement ones which I'll probably find in a moment. And they're really thin and flimsy, they're not like these old style ones. But, so I've got quite a, a selection of various ICs and RAM chips and things I've bought. So I'm going to put all those in a pile and I'm, I've got some boxes. I'll get the boxes out. So I've got these little trays there in my component drawers and they're just full of random chips and things. I think some of these were for a book I had since I was a kid and I never never had a go at doing the projects and it's a sort of a digital logic circuits book where you use breadboard and uh, I think it's like the 741 series logic chips and you make different uh, projects using them. Something I really ought to have a go with so I think these were bought for that, or some of them. I'm not sure what these are, these are random chips that were found somewhere. Um, but I think some of these have even got markings on them in a plastic bag, which is not ideal. So there's a lot of random stuff in there. Then we've got like Amiga stuff randomly laying around the place. Th these all need putting away and labelling up properly. And what I've got here is put a load of this sort of anti-static static foam you can push the chips in a bit like this stuff and the legs dig in and that just holds them in keeps them safe and prevents them from getting killed by static so I've got a load of that and I've got a large box and these little plastic things here are from DDS2, DDS3 tapes from backups all the tapes been destroyed because they were old backups and everything was going to be thrown away. Uh, so I've collected up a, a few of these and my thinking is to perhaps cut some card to make some inlays so they can have what's in them written on them. Cut some of that foam to fit in here so the chips are stored and sandwiched in nicely, obviously not too tight. And then I can make up a nice little library so whenever I need any chips uh, I just flick through and I can find them. I'm just going to try and get hold of some more of these, but they're not so common now. And I've got one of these proper chip carrier boxes. I think the plastic on these has got something in it as well to stop the plastic building up static. That's the only sort of downside of stuff like this. But I would think if the chips are stored in this as well, that they'd probably be alright. I don't know. Uh, this is quite a nice little selection of various chips and they've just been put in here to try and keep them safe for now. So we've got a Motorola 68K probably out of an Amiga. Uh, some more, these were bought to put in terrible fireboards so I just bought what I could get on eBay at the time. Obviously they've still not been put in a terrible fireboard. And I've got some PC stuff here, anyway. Intel DX4 for a 486 build. Couple of different Agnes chips, ROM chips. Uh, I think that's a multiplexer chip from a joystick port, an A500 joystick port. ROMs from an A590. I believe these are the ones that didn't work for whatever reason. And then these chips here are an upgrade for the SCSI disc controller on an A590. And I think they also would upgrade the card in the A2000 as well. There's a whole bunch of things here that really need putting to use. 
uh, but I've put them in there because they're some of them are probably quite valuable now so don't want to have to try and source any more replacements these are all nine pin joystick headers they're the type where you can clamp a ribbon cable in the back and then screw them to a chassis or something I've got quite a lot of these as you'll see um, the reason I've got so many is because partly it's cheaper to buy 20 of them than it is to buy three or four but I also wanted some different colours because these are got got quite a few projects in mind that are going to require a lot of joystick ports uh, so obviously I've got somewhere to plug joysticks in but also adapters and things I want to have a go at making so I've got quite a lot of those in fact we'll try and dig them out now and get them out of the way so there's a fair bunch of these things here and I say different um, different ones these are I think these are the surface mount ones I bought because I needed some for the A600 I've got to be honest I'm not keen on these because they're they're not a very snug fit when you've got the joystick in I, I know that the legs are generally thinner on the modern ones anyway but they're not great not very impressed to be honest and then pretty much all of these are these ribbon cable mount ones um, and get one out a ribbon cable goes through here and it clamps down and then you've got this extra bit on the back so you can loop the cable back up and, and lock it in so that it's got a bit of a strain relief but these would be ideal for mounting inside things and then running the cables to elsewhere in a system uh, particularly something like the 8500 tower project if it ever happens that would be ideal for that because what I would have liked to have done one of the reasons I've got some white ones is perhaps to run some joystick and mouse ports to the front of the case so that they're easily accessible to plug in joysticks and mice the blue ones they're female ones so they'd really be for connecting internally and then running off to to whatever they need to be connected to it's also why I'm not bothered about the color because they'll be internal so that's what they're for they were probably the cheaper ones to buy then also got a selection of these keyed pin headers um, a bit like an IDE hard disk connector you'd get on a board but again there may be some uh, little boards that I want to try and build up that we use these and again these can then be ran off to things like these on a ribbon cable I've also got here a whole load of the, the actual headers so again you clamp a ribbon cable in into that run that off to something and then that would be able to plug into there on a board yes plenty of those <laughs> and it's the thing of do I put these in the little component drawers do I put them somewhere else because there's, there's so many of them so I might put a stock of some of these in the drawers then when you've got a bulk come out like that it seems silly taking up all that room so yeah so I found some more of these um, there's some that are only if that's possible to see there's some that are only four pins or two by four these are only three by two by three and then again the same with the headers that you connect to the cable so these were probably bought just so I've got a different selection of uh, smaller sizes these were certainly bought more specifically for the joystick port stuff so I'll probably put these probably take a few out and put them in a, a drawer with these so I've got a selection accessible in the room but then I like more bulk stuff like this I'm going to try and set up boxes for those and put them there otherwise it's just going to be too much in the component drawers now I've got a, some PC things in here as well I don't know why, why that's in here all this Amiga Shield I think this is the one out of the 600 with the burnt out bit so that needs to go with that things have got very mixed up and no I haven't eaten an entire box of Dairy Milk Delights from Audi either these are um, brackets for behind processors on PCs these were bought um, for all these PCs I'm supposed to be working on and I did mention getting hold of these in one of the videos which I haven't even finished working on and put up yet let's see where do you start with some flux some decent flux some pin headers these were bought so they're the right angled ones as potential replacements for the A500 if the ones on the boards were a bit too far gone uh, these are all right because they're 
they're not I don't think there is again I don't think these are as thick as the the originals but they're not terribly thin like some of them are I know in here somewhere yeah here we go these are the female version and the pins on these are really quite flimsy compared to the originals uh, but they should still be big enough. I think these are actually too wide and need chopping down if I recall correctly. But I've got some drawers set aside for things like this. So I've got all these different sort of more oddity type ones. These are obviously extra long. These are right angled as well but they're, they're not gold plated those. So I should just chuck all of these in here because I know that this is the, the tub for the slightly more obscure ones just get rid of all the bags. Uh, joystick extensions, again that's more joysticky type stuff. Controllers, they can all go together. There's a whole load more PC bits. It's uh, very much got out of hand. It's like the um, keyboard and mouse adapters for the Amiga. I think this is the one that unfortunately that's fell apart. I don't know where the other bit to that went. This is my original keyboard adapter. Uh, I have bought some more, I'm not sure if they're in here or not. Some different ones. Uh, I might try and get around to doing a video on those. I've also bought a couple for the A600 as well because I'm just quite interested to, to have a look at them but also to see how they work because it was something I wanted to have a go at myself but I don't know how easy that is. Again this is stuff for the A600 even though this says Sinclair. These are the couple of oscillators I bought for the missing one of the A600. I bought two because at the time I was in a rush to try and get them, but it turned out to be a, a wasted effort really. So they can go on one side for that. More PC brackets, uh, CPU brackets, a bunch of cat kits. I don't think these are all from Retrobench. Uh, yeah. So again, <laughs> spare parts for things. IC sockets. There's some things in there here are organised so you can see here I've got sort of a selection of different IC sockets with different pins. I think these were bought because I was looking at re-socketing RAM chips on one of the Amigas, the Amiga 500 I think, because it was behaving really weird and glitchy. So they'll probably be used for that and they're the same as the ones in here. I've, I've had a, already had a look so I think these are no, it's not those, it's these. So again, I can just get rid of these and from here into there and then there, there's something else out of the way. Another retro bench cap kit. So we've got A500, another A500 kit. Definitely an A600 and a CD32 somewhere. It could be a CD32 one. I do know that I've now got more systems and I've got cap kits so and um, this is a M2 memory to SATA device this was just for my Amiga not for my Amiga for my hard disk and data recovery kit that I was building up hard to know where to start with some of this there's so many of some things these are all multi-position switches that I bought now I was thinking these were going to be well these here I thought were more likely to be this kind of size so there was a bit of a mistake there with those and they're just multi-position rotary switches uh, I think you can some of them you can reconfigure so that they've got a different number of positions and a different number of contacts will switch at the same time and these were again bought for sort of crazy joystick project ideas I had uh, to build a kind of a, a joystick where all the buttons could be remapped to however you wanted just by setting a switch for each position uh, whether that will actually materialize I don't know uh, some more of these ribbon cable headers uh, these are the much smaller ones so a two by three there for little interconnects and things I was thinking because um, I'm sort of looking at modern zip sticks I've done a little bit of 
initial uh, Zipstick mod in just to have a go. But I wanted to do something a bit neater and I was thinking some kind of interconnects between the top and bottom half and using a ribbon cable and just breaking the cables off as, it, as the connections are made around the joystick and it'd make it a lot easier to pull them apart and maintain them but whether there's the space to fit this sort of thing inside is, is debatable. So I've got all these sort of headers and sockets here now so I'm probably just going to mix the headers and sockets together because it's not like they're difficult to tell apart and maybe I'll get two trays actually try and make life a bit easier we've got the sockets there and then the headers there so we've got the threes so I've got the threes at the front fours in the middle and then some of the fives can go at the back well these are five headers so they'll go on that side and again it's just getting rid of all these endless bags and makes it easier to find things that's that's one of the things I'm finding is putting me off getting on with anything at the minute I'm just I can't be bothered to sort through all this so I don't do it which is all the more reason to get on with it and do it so I think with the the actual headers that go on the ribbon cables for the two by fives I managed to get a massive bag cheap and that's why there's not a small bag of those so if I grab a few of those and chuck those in there then, then we'll be set. And again there's these little strain relief bits. So you your ribbon cable ribbon cable goes through here, that's clamped and then that pierces the cable and makes contacts to all the points where the pins will go in. And then you can loop the cable back round on itself and put that over there and, and clamp it on an IDE cable, exactly the same thing. So there's much more, uh, much more connections on these. You can actually undo these because I used to do that on ID and floppy cables and then recrimp them on using a vise to uh, make cables of a more appropriate length or put the um, put these connectors closer together on the cable so it was uh, more suitable for whatever setup I was doing on a PC at the time. Ten of those. So. And the idea will be where there's excesses like that is to put those in a box in here where they're accessible so I don't forget that I've still got other stock of things and end up buying more because that's another problem that I've found keeps happening. I keep buying more of things that I've already got because I don't realise I've got them. It's a Euro power lead I think which is not particularly much use to me. Obviously you can chop them down and put a normal plug on the end so you know, sometimes I'll do that. I'll I'll cut these down and make very short power leads instead of chopping down uh, a UK one you just just chop the euro end off throw it away and I've got a div MMC for the ZX Spectrum here I've never actually used this I did lend it to a friend of mine and probably already had this out on one of my older videos yeah I've got a card in there set up uh, he's just had a go with it and it worked but I've I've never used it uh, so that again needs to go with the the stuff for the retro systems and then that can be put with the spectrum or spectrums. Then we've got some more pin header strips here. Um, I'm pretty sure yeah there's a, a little bit of an off cut left here. This is what I was using to fix the A600, the IDE port, the small pitch uh, double pin, double width pin headers. Uh, Again, they'll need to go in a home as well. That I think these are like the pin header. Well, these are basically very wide pin headers. I've not got the actual metal bits that go in, but they're easy to get. I've probably got a bag of those somewhere here. And these are really wide. I've not seen any this wide, and they were going quite cheap. So I grabbed them. I thought, well, you know, they're, again, they've got potential for use for making sort of custom cables up. So. So a selection again of random things. You see here some of these joystick bits here. These are some of the VJ actually. Bits chopped off the board. Some of this stuff's new. Some of it's been used. Doesn't really matter. But I'm just trying to keep. I try and keep similar things together because at the moment I've not bothered to label any of these little drawers. I found by grouping things that are similar together, I don't really really need to label them, and then I can move things around and chop and change as things get used up. 
so all of these will go in here. I think that's the one that probably came off of a, an older mo uh, modulator. I'm uh, pretty sure I thought I'd got some more female ones somewhere. I think the female ones are more difficult to get hold of, they're not cheap, let's just put it that way. A lot of those are probably going to get used. We've got uh, casings. These again. These are probably all 25 pin, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be a 23 pin. So I'll put that separate. I'll put that at the end. So it's going down, but there's still quite a lot here. We've got a nice pack of uh, wick there. Solder wick. It can again go with tools and things. Uh, this again, see here actually on the label, printer RAM board, Amiga use question mark. This is from many, many years ago, probably 1994 or something. Uh, I bought a second hand laser printer off of somebody, it was in a bit of a state and I managed to strip it down and get it working and then the fuser died so it ended up scrap. And I think they'd already pinched some of these RAM chips out of it before I, I got to buy it, unfortunately. But I've kept it all this time because I thought, well, they might be useful because these apparently were usable as uh, cash RAM chips on like the 486 and, and whatnot, which was what was out at that time. So I've kept that all this time and, well, <laughs> that's probably going to be a, a useful source of chips, potentially. Uh, sockets are only single white by the looks of it, so probably not much else on here any good. Probably take the chips off, maybe the dip switch. I don't know if that connector's relevant for anything. And again, there's just stacks and stacks of chips. I went crazy and bought loads of DRAM chips. Um, so I've also got some memory expansions for the Amiga that I've unpopulated, so I wanted to try and get them going. I don't think all of this stuff's DRAM and uh, to be honest I'm going to have to have a look what the numbers are and get the data sheets downloaded and as I say label these up and organise them because I haven't got a clue what I've got here. I'm pretty sure I bought a couple of chips to replace um, or to build a stereo master sampler type thing. And again we've got PC stuff here. This is just to convert an old style compact sort of IDE laptop CD-ROM drive to a, a standard IDE. Uh, again that was for something that never never came into fruition and to be honest that's probably irrelevant now. I had a right game trying to get hold of one of those at a sensible price. Uh, PC stuff again, this is like a SATA coupling expansion thing. An 85208, I think that's a CIA chip. Uh, I know I bought some spares of those, so again they need all putting into a little library of chips and labelling up and then I can perhaps make a list of what I've got as well. Again this is PC related stuff. Uh, a bunch of 128 meg micro SD cards, I wanted some smaller ones to use with the uh, SCSI to SD adapter because I don't want something to, so big that it's too big to image or it takes far too long so I bought a load of these but again these sort of smaller sizes of older sort of formats or well, older memory cards or any kind of memory card that's small are getting harder to get hold of now and here we've got these are a couple of the the latest Amiga 500 keyboard to PS2 keyboard adapters I think it's pretty much the same as this thing I don't think this this is a, this company exists now, I'm not sure, could be wrong. Uh, I can't remember what the company name for this was, otherwise I'd mention it, but they're available on eBay. I'm interested to know if these are based on a, an old design that I've found, because uh, they are using a pick chip, so I'm pretty sure that was a pick chip. I'd be interested to know. I'm sticking with little sort of kits and adapters. These are little adapter boards to convert like an external drive to be compatible with the Amiga, so these sort of thing you'd use with a GoTek. I did build one of these up, I'm not sure if that one's here, but it didn't work. I think I probably put one of the chips in the wrong way around and then when I tried it the right way 
it wasn't working so hopefully it's just that I've killed the chips and not that the circuit doesn't work because I've got three of them and some more little kits here this is a kit for a DF0 DF1 uh, switcher I've already got one of these in the A500 plus and that's got a toggle switch and I think this also uses a toggle switch but it's got a little IC on the circuit and it's supposed to be a safer way of of doing the switching uh, I, I don't know if that's the case or not but I just I quite like the idea of this and it's quite small and compact so I've gone with buying a couple of those but again I've not built those up and tried them yet and I've got another a retro bench cap kit that's definitely for an A600 that will probably be getting used fairly soon I would imagine I just need to get hold of some transistors for the A600 and then I can do that as well uh, more chips no idea what they are now I've got a load of these power connectors I uh, bought some newer bench power supplies and I wasn't keen on the connectivity on the front my old bench power supply got nice big screw terminals uh, so the new one I wasn't very happy with because it's just like plug-in only which is why I bought these banana plugs just to get me by for now so I bought these to see if I could switch that type for these because these are screw terminal and banana plugs but again they're not as good as the others so but I've not again not done that yet so now we've got some more toggle switches I think these are slightly unusual I think they're so there's a lot of connections on the back of those I think they might be like quadruple position double throw I think I think that's the right way I always get that mixed up but I got these when I was having a go at doing some joystick modding I got a whole load of toggle switches actually yeah so I went a bit mad on switches when I was messing around with the joysticks and um, I've got a load of old uh, micro switches here and these probably have come out of old joysticks including uh, zip sticks uh, I had a couple that certainly one of them got broken I, I think I may have had two or it was a competition pro yeah. so I've got a load of them They're probably not all that great some of those I bought a load of these newer ones I think these are zippy brand they're quite nice actually I'll put them in a couple of sticks and they're, they're all right some smaller ones so this is all mostly driven by this joystick thing some of these I've used some of these a couple of them on a couple of zip stick mods to put these in the center of the zip stick uh, yeah I've just been and found this is one that I got part way through and didn't complete and it, it's actually not a bad fit with the rest of the uh, joystick really so it's just sort of provide an extra extra button for a bit of extra functionality in the middle um, but that was really a fraction of sort of the modding I wanted to do with one of these which is why I've got a load of toggle switches um, but well we'll have to get onto that at some point but yeah I bought a whole variety of different sizes and configurations of sort of switching and then you can get these little well, nipples I guess for one of a better term and they screw on to certain of these switches so that you've got sort of a nicer exterior finish to the switch unless of course you want the, the silver but I was thinking of perhaps having a couple of those on here so that would have been a better better way to blend them in with the existing design of the joystick but it does turn out that these threads are there are different sizes of thread which I didn't realize so I'm probably going to have to get some some of these with a different internal thread on them so again these may as well just go in there I mean there's all the mounting nuts and bolts all different ones but it, it really doesn't matter keep them together in the same tub then that's problem solved and it probably seems a bit excessive I sometimes think well is this excessive but when you're working on something you need to be able to just go and get what you need and try it out so you need to have a bit of a stock of, of parts uh, I think again these are some ICs that were bought for something these could be the the sampling chips or they could be something else I was I think I bought some chips for doing reverb some time ago and then they sent 
some extra parts with it as like a gift. So I, I don't know what those parts are or what what the original parts were that I bought. Two of thumb screws. I think again this is sort of a multicolor ribbon cable. I think this was bought to go with the joysticks because I'm pretty sure this is nine or ten core. I've got some I'm pretty sure Bluetooth PCB. I think this is a Bluetooth audio receiver for powering headphones. A bit like the Trond ones that I was using before and I think I bought this to try a different one. Uh, again that was something I'm it's sort of ended up on the back burner and another actual cheap little Bluetooth either transmitter or receiver, could be both. But again, I've not tried that, but that can go away. A uh, tool for extracting uh, cogs off of motors, little gear cogs. It's like a little puller, I think you call it. It's sort of pulling cogs and bearings off of axles, but on a small scale. I got this because I was trying to fix um, the boot release on the car because the motor had played up and I needed to take the cog off and put it on a different motor. In the end I just sort of got that work in a different way. It's a bit rough but it works so that needs to go with the tools. So this looks like it's probably a fairly crude diagram for a recapping kit. I wonder if this is a, I think this is a CD32 recap kit and I'm wondering if that's what this one here is. Could well be. Certainly, the retro bench kits are really good because they they produce a very nice. I can find it. And this might be an older one, so that, uh, some of them are, are more colour, and they've got a very nice layout with all colour coded and very clearly showing what's where. And they even cover the fact that you've got different revisions of boards because there's certainly I know on the A600 the capacitors in different places and things have been moved around so they're a good uh, kit to get because the instructions have been thought about really. Uh, I'm not sure what these are, they might be, oh, these are rotary encoders I think. And these, you'd basically have a dial on the end and they just turn continually. They're not like a variable resistor where they've got a stop and start. And the sort of thing you get where you've got a little jog wheel to, say, cycle through um, a menu or a list of tracks. And then it sort of encodes the direction on these pins and then you'll have some circuitry, probably a microcontroller, that will monitor that and, and that will control something. You, you get these on uh, things like the GoTech. GoTech uh, floppy drive emulator to select your disk image. So I don't know if I bought them for that or for something else. So I'm just going to probably assemble all of these so that all the bits are together and then find a home for those. A bit of an oddity really, so I'm not quite sure where I'm going to put those. That may have come with um, an expansion for the A600 that clips on the over the um, CPU, that's the word, the word that's right in front of me. So it might be to try and clean the contacts or something. Uh, yeah, I've done more than that and it still doesn't work, but it's another story. Okay. A selection of rubber feet. And these little things, um, I can get into them. These again are like a multi-position switch. And these were stupidly expensive to get normally, but I found a load either from Russia or it might even have been Poland. I'll get the damn things out. And I've bent the legs. So I think these probably are probably some kind of binary encoder. We go from 0 through to 9 because we've only got four pins on the back and I assume that would be the common. I've got something else like that in a minute which I might show. And these are really just to have on a PCB to select. I suppose you could use them as an option selector. Uh, again I thought these might be useful for a joystick mod but they're that hard to turn. Really difficult to turn. 
I'm not so sure now, but they, they could have a potential use at some point. Uh, they're a little bit delicate really. So it's a bit later on at night now. I decided to give up trying to record because there was a load of kids screaming and screeching outside. Uh, I don't think they've been murdered, but sometimes you just can't really tell. So I've had some dinner. I've edited an old video that I've found. I've got quite a few that I'm trying to get edited up and just chuck them out because, I mean, I might as well have I've recorded them. So I hopefully get some of those out over the next couple of weeks. So, yeah, there's not really that much left to deal with it. Really. Uh, I've got a few old bits of board and that that I keep. Sometimes like this thing here, it's got these little tactile domes, so it's just the sort of thing I'll keep for spares and it's not worth trying to take them off. So that'll get chucked in the box with all the spare PCBs and things. Uh, rubber feet and that, I've got a tub for stuff like that, but I don't keep things like that in here because it's not really, it's not really things that you're going to need to hand. I've got some cheapy looking banana plugs, again they'll be for use with the power supply. don't think we need any string. And then I've got these little, these are quite good actually. I think I first saw these on Maddie's channel, Miss Mad Lemon. And they're like little breakouts for uh, DB9 connectors or joystick connectors. And the breakouts are these screw terminals on the back, so ideal for sort of testing and playing around. These particular ones I really like because they've got the option of soldering pin headers in the middle as well, so you could then jump from there to uh, some uh, breadboard. So I thought they would be a good little uh, addition to have. Not quite sure where they're going to live. Another PCMCIA adapter to uh, CF card. It does actually fix, fit the A600 as well, so that can go with the bits for that. And then there's these weird looking things. These are like um, a bit like what you'd get on the back of a, a SCSI drive and you can set the ID and you've got these little counters that you can press. They don't tick along, they're actually individual units, you can just clip them together. And they just go through from zero to nine. These particular ones are, they've got a decimal output on them. There are two sorts, so you'll see. Um, Hopefully you'll see there's a common pin and then there's a zero through to four that end and then five through to nine there. So depending on what value you've got selected you'll get a circuit from the common pin through to one of the others. And I've got uh, some more of these here. And they look the same. And they kind of are. But these have got a a binary output on them. I don't think they're very well marked actually. So you'll get a binary equivalent of the decimal value rather than a single connection for each value. Uh, it just, just works like a normal binary number. So a one, you'll get your common pin and the pin that represents the first byte or first bit, should I say. A two would be the a zero and the, the second bit that would be active, which represents a two. The three would be both of the first bit and the second bit active, which gives you your three. It's just where it's like binary. Um, not really sure the binary ones are going to be that much use to me, but I just got them out of curiosity and interest, really. But the decimal ones, again, this is another crazy joystick project idea. I was thinking about a sort of a reprogrammable joystick where you could or joy, not necessarily a joystick, but it could be um, a pad of buttons, and then have this so that you can basically define the function of each of the buttons. So you've got a possibility of 10 options there. So you could have what, option zero or whatever as no function. Then you could have your left, down, up, right, fire, fire button two, maybe fire button three, and then maybe things like an auto fire button one, and then perhaps a function to do a waggling of the joystick, which I know is kind of cheating, but... And then you can sort of have that built into a box with a load of buttons and you can just customise how the uh, the buttons behave, what functions they do. 
I even thought maybe stacking a couple of these up so you could have something where perhaps you could have a button which presses fire and up at the same time because there's some games where up and fire does a particular action so that would give you a way of achieving that just by pressing one button. Uh, probably doesn't make any sense what I've just said but uh, something I'm hopefully I'll well with, with everything else hopefully I'll get around to it and then it might make more sense. So I think that's about it really. Uh, yeah it's a bit of a mess on here but well it's not actually too bad. So I've just got to put this stuff away now in places it belongs. I found some more well these chips here that are in these drawers I'm going to put them in here as well and just have chips separate so they're not mixed in with all the other components. And that'll free two more drawers up. I found some more bits in there as well. Not entirely sure what they all are. PC stuff and whatnot there. That lot can go with all the controllers and that can go with the Amiga stuff. Uh, these boards here I've got a whole got a whole load of Amiga parts still in here. And then I go and find another box of the most random of crap again. I think this is all bits from previous projects and things I've been working on. It's just been scooped into a box out of the way. This is the uh, floppy conversion board that I was talking about. So it lets you plug into the external port. You've got all the usual chips that you'd have on an external drive, usually mounted on a PCB in the back of it. And then that goes through to a floppy drive header. Uh, this one doesn't work. I think this is probably because I've killed it, but so that's something to, to have another look at as well. But I can put that with the other bits now I've found it. But even things like you know the old wire from one of these old uh, joystick ports, it's worth hanging on to for rewiring joysticks and things. It seems a bit silly in some ways, but it's there, it may as well get reused. In fact, that is one thing that is missing in this room, and that's a uh, a bit of a selection of wire and I've got boxes of bits like that it's just that they're again they're in inaccessible places they're all tucked away so these are the sort of things that need to get brought into here where they're actually useful. This was from cleaning up the Amiga 600 ports so <laughs> that's how long that's been in here. And there are other little storage boxes and things that I've got this is all sort of heat shrink, so I've got a fair selection in here. Could do with some more sizes actually, believe it or not. And then little offcuts are just store in the end here. Uh, there's a few other components scattered about in some of these and various clips and things, so I'm not quite sure if they're going to stay in here or how that's going to work out. And I've also got some sets here of like resistor sets, uh, capacitor sets, that kind of thing. There's some more chips in here as well actually. They should probably probably not be in here. Variable resistors, transistors, some older components as well. A uh, variety of different bits. I think that's a, yeah, I think that's a yeah, Z80 CPU in there so again I'll try and put any IC based things elsewhere so they can come out of here. So it's just a slow process really of me trying to get things into a, a state of organisation that works. Because I, I do keep forgetting what's in these because I'm not really using them much at the moment. I've got sort of like heat resistant covers and things but these are mostly empty at the moment. A couple of spare ones of these. Oh, maybe not. And this is all seems to be like old bits and pieces, old components, old bulb holders. So yeah I'm trying to keep some of this stuff separate because it's well for sort of building new projects it's I'm unsure whether using old components is a good idea. So all that lot's been put away I've just got all the tools to sort out now but I won't bore everyone with this as well. <laughs> 